gonna show you the basic disassembly and cleaning procedure for the dynamic mixing head. If it, um, if for some reason you need to clean inside the mixing body. So one of the first things you wanna do, the first line of defense is of course, you just wanna make sure the path is clear. And you can take a standard syringe, fill it with whatever solvent is gonna work for your material. Here I have just a lure fitting adapted to the pipe thread and you can cycle solvent through. So if you squeeze this in, it's gonna come out here. So just make sure you have you know, a receptacle to catch it. Flushing the supply line. Yeah. So um, keep in mind, if you're using acetone, something like that, it's probably going to eventually dissolve the rubber inside a standard syringe. So you gotta work fast before that happens or use a metal syringe or something like that. Whatever delivery method you have available for flushing the, um, the solvent through. If that doesn't work, or if you want to get a little more detailed, this access hole on the side can be removed with, an, with a five millimeter hex driver. And we have, uh, depending on which version of this you have, some of them have an O-ring in here and some are going to use um, Teflon tape as the thread seal. So just keep that in mind when you're reassembling it. If you don't have an O-ring, use Teflon tape. So you can see here into the hole here. So you could also reach in here with a, with a swab coated in solvent. Um, you could even use compressed air to blow out the hole. So I'm going to put this back in. Like I said, if you don't have the O-ring, use Teflon tape on the threads. And of course, all of these fittings can be removed. And you can access into the hole if you need to just to manually clean now, if you need a more detailed clean i'll go ahead and leave that off on the front right here there's four access holes if you remove the screws inside these access holes This is a three millimeter hex driver. All right. The back portion will separate from the front portion. So now you can get to the, um, the valve seat that's in here. So you can tell that there's a, there's a conical valve here. There's area under there that may need to be cleaned out Again, using whatever tool you have. If necessary, you can um, charge this pneumatically and cycle this back and forth to, um, to clean it out some, or if that helps you cleaning it out. On this end, you can see the, the mixing channels right there. These, uh, these plastic O-rings can pop out if necessary. Just make sure you replace those before you uh, reassemble. So you can see the path right here. The, the material goes in here and comes out this hole. It goes in here and goes out this hole. Again, you can put solvent in here. You could use compressed air to blow this out. Um, you could use a cotton swab or other tool to get in there with solvent and clean it out. Uh, if you have truly hardened epoxy up in one of these that is beyond the point of using solvent, it's going to be trickier. You could get a, a drill that is smaller than the hole here and twist it by hand. Don't use, don't use a, um, a drill because you will definitely damage it if you do that. And you can use it to kind of, you know, twist and pull, twist and pull, and you'll be able to kind of clean out the, um, any hardened residue from the sidewalls. Um, Okay, so once you do that, you should be able to, by following those procedures, you should be able to clean out the flow path. If you need um, to clean inside this portion, once again, you can disassemble this portion of the, um, let me get this, again with your three millimeter driver. You have two M4 screws. This plate comes off and again you see you have a couple of plastic um, 
O-rings in there, which I don't have the right tool here to pull those out, but if you get a small tool, you can pry those out. You should be able to, if there's anything clogging up, you should be able to just clean it from the outside right here and in here. Again, by using a, uh, a swab dipped in solvent or and or you know blowing with compressed air, whatever tools you have available. So reassembling. You need a ball in driver for this because you're going in at a slight angle or just it'll be a little easier with one so what i'm doing here is i'm not tightening this all the way i'm just going to snug it or just just barely tight i'm going to go to the opposite corner until i just start to feel some resistance Okay, and now once they're all just, just barely snug, then you can go back and go to alternate corners to tighten them a little bit each time. That way you make sure you have even torque on all four screws. So now you should be good to go. Um, of course, while you're doing this, if you see anything like a damaged O-ring, it could be time to replace those. There shouldn't be any reason to do that though because there shouldn't be any reason that um that your material gets up into this place if the if the tubes are installed properly there are a series of o-rings up inside this um the housing that, that holds the the uh, spindle that's a little trickier to clean <clears throat> hopefully you won't have to deal with that um if you do that that's a little more delicate procedure and we'll have to cover that in another video because there's a whole series of o-rings and seals that goes up into here that can be easily damaged if you're not careful so your material okay. typically wouldn't make it up there it shouldn't because they're there if you take this apart there are several o-rings going all the way up and um there really shouldn't be any reason to need to clean up in there again if this is not spinning freely that would be the only time you'd want to do that, but uh, chances are that's not the case. Chances are if you have a clog, it's going to be up inside these holes.